Okay, Mikey. Okay, it's nice to have Erica back. There she is, back from Arkansas. And you'll be here how long? Forever. You're back here to stay? Sure, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, well, <laughs> say goodbye to Arkansas. You got tired of the goats out there. That's a good place to say goodbye to, no offense. I know all about it. I'm from Kansas. Yeah. I left there years ago. All right. Uh, if you're going to consider going into this kind of a ministry, uh, you've got to develop a thick skin. Okay, you can't let anything anybody says to you or about you bother you. And I had a family come in for prayer the other day, and it was the husband and wife, and the son was the, the wife's son, not the father's son. That was a stepson. And they came in, they wanted him to get healed of schizophrenia. Okay, so I was explaining to the couple, to, to shorten this, uh, you guys came in here with this level of faith here, but now that we're talking about schizophrenia demons, your faith's going to have to go from here to there. Because there isn't any way to get this demon out at your faith level. Well, the wife heard me say, I said they don't have any faith. She got steamed, jumped up, ran out, of the office. ran out of my office. Yeah, I didn't think anything of it because I've had people running out of my office for years. <laughs> Sometimes there's a track meet in there. She then goes on social media and posts this. And here it is. Be warned, my fellow believers of Almighty Lord, this place, this place there, where you are now, by the way, you're all partly guilty. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, your accessories to the crime. All of you. You're right here. This place tries to come to you as an angel of light when they're clearly working for the enemy. I brought my husband there in desperate need, not knowing or realizing I was actually putting him and us in danger. Mike Kelly, and I can't remember what that long haired Caucasian woman's name was. <laughs> Oh, she left. Yeah. She was sitting right over there, and she bolted. She's gone. Yeah. yeah, and she didn't know that that's actually her name, white Caucasian woman. <laughs> it, was, it was a complete, there she is. There's a white Caucasian woman in the corner by the ladder. It's the one by the ladder. That's her, and that's her name. First name, Caucasian, last name, woman. <laughs> they try manipulating you into believing they're helpers of God, but it's very clear to me early on as God gave me discernment to run. She did. She bolt, sat up and bolted out of my office. Carl Lewis. As they would try to act genuine, I do that a lot, and I fool a lot of people. <laughs> I really couldn't care less about you, but I put on a, um, De Niro kicks in. I'm there. I got it. I feel the darkness within all of them. I wore this shirt in honor of her. Today's Black Shirt Day, and it's also White Caucasian Day. There she is. She's got glasses on. You can't trust her. I don't trust her. Kelly told me not to. <laughs> run, it says in bold capital letters. See that? Run! Exclamation point. Exclamation point. Yes, that's right. As they would try to act genuine, I felt darkness within all those, especially Brother Mike. <laughs> that's me. <laughs> she forgot my first name, Caucasian Brother Mike. <laughs> he seemed to be the devil himself. Whoa, somebody caught me. <laughs> please, if you're desperate as we were, believe in the Almighty Lord that He Himself, please believe, if you're desperate, believe in the 
believe that he himself and only through him can anything and all be healed and delivered. And that was the part I agreed with. 100%. <laughs> uh, I read all that to get a, it's a giggle, but to me it was nothing. But this is what you're going to have to get used to and see as a common thing in this kind of a ministry. This isn't a glamour ministry at the church or something on TV or something like that. As soon as you mention demons, people instantly turn off. Okay, and then everything, and then it goes bad after that. <clears throat> so there's no glamour in any of this at all. This is strictly helping people ministry. There's nothing great about it. You don't get anything out of it. It's all hard work and uh, there's no, I can't think of any benefits. The only benefit I know of is seeing the Holy Ghost heal somebody. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. If that's something that you're interested in, this would be a good ministry to get into. If you're looking for pats on the back, fanny pats, compliments, things like that, you're not going to get them. It's just not going to happen. Okay. Uh, we've had thousands of people come through here, the House of Healing and everything, got massive deliverances, huge healings, never heard from them again. Never got a thank you, nothing. Didn't send us diddly squat. Okay, So if you're used to that and you're okay with it, none of, none of this bothers you. Th this kind of thing on social media does not even phase you. Because you're already preconditioned to understand that's not what you're looking for. You're not looking for pats on the back. That's not why you're here. You want to help somebody. You want to see God help them. <clears throat> That's all that matters. And none of the other stuff matters. Nothing. The mon no, no money, no, no fame, no fortune. There's no fame and fortune in this kind of a ministry. It's just completely... Garbage is what it is. It's a garbage end of the ministry. This is the ministry where you're taking out the trash. You're working in the dumpster. You work in the junkyard. Nobody has any respect for you. No one really likes you. Uh, this, is, this is how it is. This is what it is. And so none of that stuff ever bothered me. I couldn't care less. So I was fine with it. But we have some people come in here and they, they have trouble you know, with the grind, you know. And then that's on, that's on top of uh, staff problems. And the devil is constantly attacking my staff, trying to turn them into schizoids, psychos, zombies, clinically depressed. I mean, everything hits the staff, okay. Weird stuff happens. Uh, something stupid happens, and it causes a... a people to get a fussy with each other, you know, so it's just everything hits here, everything hits here. Crap hits me all the time, at home, family, everything. Crap from A to crap Z. And if you're not focused and you don't know what you really want, you're not going to make it. You're going you're gonna to sink. Uh, anybody here last night? Okay. If you saw that altar call last night, your mouth hit the floor. There was one sick person after the other standing there that 90% of the churches in town wouldn't even take a look at. And we were welcoming them in. <laughs> With open arms, but we are going to get sicker and sicker here. We're going to get more and more sick people here. Okay? Because the churches are sending them over to me. They don't know what to do with them. They can't do anything with them. The people are out of their minds and out of control. So they, they have a, they have, some of them have my card in their desk, hidden in their desk. And they got a psycho parishioner sitting there, whacked out of their minds wanting to go into all kinds of weird ministries, wanting to get bats born again, stuff like that. And they go, oh, hold on a minute. 
Now, you got a pen? You don't have one. Huh? Here's a pen. You got a paper? You don't have one? There's one. Write this number down. White Caucasian Brother Mike. <laughs> Call this phone number and go get help. I've had it happen dozens of times over the years. The pastors hand out my number to get rid of that person in their congregation because they have no idea what to do with them. And it's going to get worse as we get over there. So if God lays it on your heart to form a small group to come in once a week, once every other week or something, and just pray for the ministry, I'd like to see two or three or four people in a group. If, if God lays that on, I'm not telling you to do it. I'm saying if, if that happens, just come in here in the main sanctuary whenever you want to do it, once a month, whatever it is. I need a small group of people to pray for the ministry because the number of sick people is, is starting to go up. God's holding it back because we're not ready to take a giant landslide. We'd be over, overrun. Okay, So if you have that thought in your heart, to lead that prayer meeting. Just come in, spend 30 minutes praying for the ministry and the anointing, because that's what we need. We're, last night was a red flag to me. We're getting more than white Caucasian women here. <laughs> we're getting, we're getting, whew, we're getting people that are sick. And they were all over the place at the altar last night. Several of them were there. There's really tough cases. Tough cases. But we had some wonderful deliverances. So the Holy Ghost, I see tough cases. He's never had one. Amen. Praise God. Never had one. Now on, continuing on, this poor guy here, Steve Binion, used to be in our ministry here. If, if you talk to this guy or anything like that, just pray and ask God to help him and forgive him. Okay, he's, he's still attacking us. He's, he hates us now. Uh, he sends out a CD, I told you that, a little cast out tape, a Michael W. Smith cast out. So if you've come here, I gave you dem demons. And he sends you a cast out tape to cast me out of them. That's how bad this thing got. So just go ahead and pray for the guy. <laughs> Forgive him. You know, we, he's been, he was around here for years. We, I helped him so many times over the years. Ridiculous. Now he hates my guts. And boy, that's another thing I forgot to tell you earlier. You wouldn't believe how many people who just think you're the greatest thing in the world temporarily. And then they turn on you. It happens all the time. It's happened to me dozens and dozens of times over the years. Staff members, people that visit here, routine, okay? So when they turn on you, if that bothers you, you're not going to survive in this ministry. If somebody turns on you, it's like, oh, it's Tuesday. That's all it is. You don't feel anything, nothing. It doesn't bother me in the least. Yeah, but it's going to happen, and there's no way to stop it. I've never been able to stop it. You can't make everybody happy in life in any field, much less this one. Yeah, so you have to adjust. You've got to improvise. You've got to adapt like a Navy SEAL. That's what they do. They do those three things. You've got to be a spiritual Navy SEAL around here. Improvising, adapting, adjusting. That's a good Bible study. Go ahead and steal that. <laughs> okay, so poor Steve. Oh, man, awful. Already went over that. Okay. Now, uh, now, we're starting to get a lot of... Uh, Kundalini Christian witchcraft stuff coming in, okay? It spread all over the country. What happened was uh, years ago, I think it was 92 or 3, a big revival broke out at a 
church at an airport in Toronto, Canada. Huge, huge revival. And uh, the people running the revival were the f best people you ever met in your life. Absolutely great people. Uh, one of the guys was Randy Clark. You ever met him? Nicest guy you've ever run into. Humble, uh, beautiful man. Uh, the Arno family was pastor in that church. We're okay, eight, eight short. We're eight short. Oh shoot, uh, Lori, can you? Lori's going to get the. Okay, I'm sorry about that. I'll hold off on that then. Uh, uh, this revival broke out, and it was amazing. All kinds of stuff was happening. Well, before these revivals break out, all revivals. Before it happens in the natural world, it's already picked up in the spirit world. The demons know something's going to happen. They just don't know exactly the moment, boom, the spirit moves. But they, they get the waves, like waves at the shore. You know, they're getting bigger. There's kind of a storm out there. So they have an idea something's going to happen. And that's what happened. So uh, God started moving and then... Boom, an avalanche of demons from God only knows where converged on this church. And it was a battle royale. And the demons that hit them were not the regular demons we run into here. Fear demons, lust demons, uh, murder, this stuff. It was, it was familiar spirits who are counterfeiters and they flooded the revival with counterfeiting uh, spiritual behaviors. So, in the whole revival, went on for months, some guy there would be howling like a dog. This, this guy would have gotten filled with the Spirit, speaking in tongues. This one, this one's rolling around the floor. This one's screaming. This one's praising God. I mean, it was a total mixed bag. This went on for months. Demons manifesting, Holy Spirit manifesting. Mixed bag, mixed up bag, mixed. Okay. This part was great, that part was hideous. The people running the, the revival, uh, Clark and, and the Arnauds, didn't have any discernment. They didn't know how to figure out that that was a demon manifesting, that one's barking. Ow, ow, ow. Whoa, time out. Take that person back in the room and get those spirits out. They didn't know what to do. Okay, so our nose idea was if we, if we confront this thing, uh, we're going to have this thing blow up on us. So let's just take a positive view of it and just go with the flow. So this mix, mixture of familiar spirits and the Holy Spirit manifestations spread all over the country. People were leaving the revival, starting a revival at their house, their home, their church, their city, their state. It went all over the country. Okay. And then two people uh, came down from Canada that were huge. Uh, Todd Bentley and Patricia King and these people were uh, the same thing. Highly anointed, mixed, wonderful people, deceived. Doing a great job, lacking discernment. Mixed bag. Okay? Now, as I mentioned a thousand times, the Holy Spirit lives here, not here. Okay? And the kundalini spirits, the religious demons, the familiar spirits, they don't get in there. They get in here. And the goal of both of them, the Holy Spirit and a familiar spirit, is to feed your conscious mind and eventually train your subconscious mind. Okay? So, as you renew your mind in Christ, you take in the information in your conscious mind, and eventually, over time, as you assimilate it, your subconscious mind absorbs it. 
So you become a new creation in Christ. You become a different person. I am a completely different person than I used to be, okay? So when I was living in sin, if I saw a hot babe, I'd check out their breasts, their booties, everything. And then after my mind was renewed, now I subconsciously see women as human beings, needing whatever they need, not as sexual objects or something to masturbate over. So my mind was totally renewed through the Holy Ghost and God's Word, and I became a different person in numerous areas. That's just one of them. Right? I used to have all kinds of greed, covetousness. Planexia is a Greek word. It means to have a lust or a passion for money or material things. I had that bad. I spent decades chasing the almighty buck. I renewed, renewed my subconscious mind, eventually changed. Now, I have zero interest in money. I don't even take a salary here. I'm a volunteer. I work here for free. That's the goal of every born-again Christian, to become a new creation in Christ. Not exactly like me, or you, or you, everybody's different, but the process is the same. The Word of God comes in here, the anointing allows you to change your subconscious mind so you become a different person. And if you don't, you become a what? You stay in church and you become a carnal, lukewarm Christian, which is not what God wants you to be. He wants you to be a channel or a minister of the Spirit to help others, not rake in dough and be a, a, the Copeland thing. That, that stuff's all satanic. You're to be a servant of God, helping people out of love, not out of something you're going to get out of something. I didn't get any amens on that, so I think there's a lot of backsliders here today. <laughs> and I sense there's a lot of Caucasians here. <laughs> that's not good. So that's how the process works. It's exactly the same way with familiar spirits. They want you to see this guy barking. Oh, that's the Lord. It's just God blessing someone differently. Oh, okay, got it. And so now you can go to your church and convert other people into this familiar spirit system. See? See? So, and, and the familiar spirits use all the scriptures. They have them all memorized, the whole book. Thou shalt not judge. And so he's barking. Oh, you're judging. Oh, now we got you beat. That's how they beat you. Okay? So Phoenix became the hotbed of this in the West. Okay. And then uh, another revival broke out in uh, Florida called the Lakeland Revival. And Todd Bentley rose to the top of the prophetic movement. And he was running this revival in Florida. And it was big, really big. People were flying in there from all over the world to go to this revival. Behind the scenes, God was going to reach out to these people and help them. And he allowed something to happen. He allowed something to be exposed. Normally he doesn't expose stuff because it hurts too many people and some people get discouraged and beaten down too bad. So thank God he doesn't expose everything. But once in a while he has to expose something. And so God was uh, watching this happen and the familiar spirits made Todd Bentley the pinnacle of the pyramid, the number one apostle of the whole movement nationwide, the number one guy. All of the major ministers around the country flew to Florida for a apostleship uh, crowning anointing service. Okay? 
they were all there. Patricia King wasn't there. There was a couple, couple missed it, but basically 90% of all, I mean, all the big guns were there. All of them. They went through a ceremony. He was crowned the prophetic king, the whole deal. Uh, Wagner was there. Bill Johnson was there. All of them were there. A couple missing, but basically 90% of them. He's the top guy, the top apostle, running the whole movement, anointed by God, called by God. People would get up and give speeches. Then they'd give another speech. Then they give another one, six, seven, eight speeches about Todd Bentley being called by God, divinely set as the apostle of the movement. God himself put him up there at the top. God anointed him. God told him to take it over. We acknowledge that. We, our discernment is telling us he is the man. That's the guy. Everybody said that's the big guy. Yeah. Unanimous vote. And God said, hey. I love you. I got to show this to you. Boom. Two weeks later, God runs off with his girlfriend, leaves his wife and three kids in the middle of the revival. What was that all about? Well, the minor issue was lust and adultery. That's the normal stuff in church. The big issue was God was telling you, children, listen to me. You're missing something. Okay, what are you missing? Here's what he's missing. People can have powerful Holy Ghost anointings and still be infected with familiar spirits. And so the familiar spirits mimic what he does. They mimic stuff. So then you had all this satanic stuff sweep through. There for a while, oh, there's a gem. Look. There's a gem. There's a mineral. No, I think that's a mouse turd. No, no, it's a gem. It's a gem. Oh, there's some. Look at that gold dust. Is my anointing off the hook? And I'm Caucasian. Okay. This insanity swept the movement. It was so bad. Nobody would listen. No one. And they had everything. They had everything going. All of it. Oil. Everything. Feathers. Look at that. They all became farmers. And they were all white feathers. I didn't know that all chickens were Caucasians. <laughs> didn't know that. My goodness. <clears throat> well, after that, the Todd Bentley thing clunk, clunked for obvious reasons. And then uh, the new Mecca then switched from Phoenix to California. And Bill Johnson then, Bob Jones died. And Bill Johnson then re replaced those two. Yeah? Was Bentley was ben the guy over the Dream Center? At the Dream Center? No. No, 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 no. No, Barnett, Tommy Barnett's solid as a rock. No, he's, he, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. Tommy Barnett's great. Look, I, this is a totally different fish here. Bentley's gone, yeah. Uh, the gold dust, uh, the yeah. feathers, and the mm -hmm. oil, were they just dropping that from the ceiling out of their church, or was this the... No, supernatural demonic manifestation. Wow. Yeah, no. They weren't dropping it, because some of them were dropping out of their hair. I saw one minister drop it out of their hair. Okay, wow. Yeah, there's a diamond over there, yeah. Yeah, I've been having a problem with the, uh, the scripture where it talks about uh, blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. A lot of uh, really prom prominent ministers will say that that is. Uh, say you're, you're giving the. You're saying that these are. Um, this is a real miracle. That's not a real miracle, and then that would be a blasphemy in the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. I know I, that's what I'm, I'm having a hard time with that because it, Jesus does say it right after the uh, the fact that they said he was doing it by the. 
by yeah by the Elzebub. Mm -hmm. So it was right after that. But I mean, if there's if you're talking this mixed bag, you know, mm -hmm. all these. So uh -huh. you're saying if you if you're off on one of these, not that one's this and that, then I mean, last week in the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I, I mean. That's no, you're not. Uh you got to understand the definition of blasphemy. It's a Greek word, blasphemia. It means to deliberately and knowingly verbally denigrate something dedicated to God. You know, as I said before, it could be that chair. In fact, it is that chair. When I got these chairs from Walmart, <laughs> uh, I bought them from a Caucasian salesman. <laughs> I had these chairs dedicated to God. Okay, so if you know I had those chairs dedicated to God, you know that, and you deliberately come in and say that's a satanic chair, knowing that it isn't, okay, that's blasphemy. If you do it ignorantly, ah, oh, this whole place is screwed, that's not blasphemy. And all forms of blasphemy are forgivable, except one. And so if you tell Jesus, that's blasphemy. Because you know he isn't. Or if you're out of your mind drunk, that wouldn't be blasphemy because you wouldn't know that. You just think Jesus is Buddha or Gumby or Mickey Mouse. Okay? So blasphemy is a condition of the heart. You have to know what you're doing. And that's why the Pharisees committed blasphemy because they knew he was not healing by demons. They knew he was the Son of God. They all knew that. But they said the opposite. But if you say that and you don't know that, you're just saying something nasty, that's not blasphemy. Wasn't that also for, I mean, I know the Bible says over and over, for that generation. Wasn't that regard, for what? With regard to blasphemy. I was just studying. What generation? The generation of denial from the Pharisees and the two <coughs> He talks to over and over, generally, this generation. Uh -huh. um, yeah, it was that generation. Jesus as the Son of God and all that. Yeah, that, that generation did do that. And then now we're in another generation doing it. We're in the Jesus cancel culture now. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. But that's all forgivable blasphemy. Yeah. Joe. Is, uh, is Pentecostalism and legalism, is that under the religious... Spirits, yeah, evil religious spirits. I'm dealing with a friend. I mean, I'm dealing with some people, great people. They have a lot of zeal, a lot of passion, and they're fantastic people. But it almost, I've heard you mention one time when an organization says you got to do it this way or it ain't going to work for you, that's a red flag. Get out of there. Uh, but I'm, I'm dealing with wonderful people that are insisting you got to follow these rules, you got to do it this way, can't eat pork got to have head coverings, etc., uh, etc. Et Those are religious demons, but uh, if you're in a group like that and you want to help them, you can still stay in that group. You know, there's some legalism, things that are no big deal, you know. Uh, here at our church, we wear these ties and we part our hair like that. Okay. <laughs> If you're called to help those people, okay, wear the tie like that. What difference does it make? Part your hair over there. Help these people. If the legalism is, now you're, you're, not, you're sinning because you had a ham sandwich at Arby's. Whoa, red flag. Now we're into the morality issue. Now you might want to consider taking further precautions. Okay, some legalism things don't matter. You just play along with it. Who cares? Great people. Our, our anointing at our church is based on this pink underwear. <laughs> we had our pink underwear anointed. Okay, that's fine. I don't mind. Give me a pink underwear. I'll wear that. Okay, now let me pray for this. But you're, you're going to go to hell with blue underwear. Whoa, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Now we've stepped over the line of legalism. And I'm going to have to do something about that. I can't wear, I'm not going to go with that. See that? 
That's what Paul was saying. I become all things to all people so I might win a few. He wasn't talking about morally. Okay, I'll go with Buddha. No, you know, not a chance. No chance. Well, you want me to cut my hair or shave my beard? Uh, no problem. Give me some souls. That's how Paul handled legalism. You want to? Praise God. Yeah, okay. What was I talking about before he asked that question? Thank God. <laughs> blasphemy, yeah, blasphemy. Yeah, that's not blasphemy. Legalism is not wear this, drink that. That's no. It's all forgivable except one. So anyway, this uh, this uh, group now, the, these people got replaced. Phoenix got replaced, and now. Now we're out in California, okay? And now it's gone to another level. So here it is. They have sozo deliverances out there. Sozo is a Greek word that means what? Yeah. To be delivered, that's right. And sozo is a contextually interpreted term, as we've discussed. So if you see the word saved, it doesn't mean anything unless you look at the context of what's being saved in, in the text. So this, this verse could mean different types of things being delivered. Could be sins, could be physical illnesses. You gotta look at the text. But anyway, they named this ministry Sozo Healing Ministry. And so here's, here's their uh, six steps. One through six is Sozo. Then they have other spiritual events over there, grave soaking. You go out and lay on a prophet's grave or a minister's grave. <coughs> Just lay on the grave and absorb their anointing. A soaking prayer. Okay, we'll get to that in a minute. Christian tarot cards. They now have cards where you deal out and God picks the card for your destiny and you go through the system there. Okay. Uh, this one here, all these steps here, these six steps, all have good stuff in it. There's a lot of good information. For example, Father's Ladder, you know, where you go through the process of this was your dysfunctional dad and this is your heavenly father. And you, go, you work through the differences between the two here, which is really good. Uh, some people don't like God because they had a bad dad. And so the devil gets them to associate a male father figure with your birth father figure who was a, a kook or a loon. And so the person's relationship with God is poor. So that's in this section here, for example. Right? Here's the four door section hatred, adultery, occult. You go through this door, you shut these doors. Which is great. You got to shut the doors to the, the four doors. Same. All oh, that's great. Presenting Jesus. Walls. Walls. Let's go to that one. There are certain things emotionally and spiritually that you, you've built up walls over the years, usually through abuse, and you've got to tear these walls down for the Holy Spirit to move. Good idea. Great idea. Triggers. Beautiful life. Beautiful section. Uh, someone says something to you or does something, and like all human beings, it triggers a memory, an event, uh, an emotion of when you were young or when you were young adult. Something happens in your past. Or this person's personality triggers a negative personality in your past. See that? That's, that's all good. Good stuff there. Editing. Okay, Jesus, the problem with all of these sections is that it's similar to secular counseling where you uh, learn to visualize things. That's what we did in secular counseling, psychology. You learn to visualize stuff. Okay? In editing, you visualize Jesus coming in to an old memory. What's your memory? Uh, 
you got molested when you were five and your uncle came over to the house, come in the back door, got you in the bed, snuck up on you, took your pants off, etc. Now you're going to, through my counseling, helping you, you're going to visualize Jesus coming into the room instead of your uncle. And Jesus coming into your room, there you are, and he comes up to you, gives you a hug, says something nice to you, I love you. See, I'm, I'm helping you visualize that. See that? Follow that? Okay. Uh, and so Jesus comes in and cancels out an old memory and replaces it with a new Jesus memory. Okay? Okay. Same thing here. Presenting to visualization. And then you then you have Jesus come in and hear a lot of that. Then you ask him to talk to you. What's he saying to you? Visualize him sitting on you sitting on his lap. As a two-year-old. Remember when you were two years old and your dad beat you with a belt? Now, now go back there. You're visualizing your Jesus. You're, you're two years old. Instead of getting beaten with a belt, you're sitting on his lap. You're sitting on Jesus' lap. Something like that. Different things. Okay. What's going on here? <laughs> we're about to get screwed. We're going under. As soon as the demons find out you like to visualize stuff, they will start pumping stuff into you you won't even believe. Oh, you like Jesus, do you? Oh, there he is. Oh, look, he's on a cloud. Oh, my goodness. And the people that we have coming in here and that go to Sozo, you can't visualize stuff here. They have too many demons. The demons will simply copy it. They're copycatters. And they will start giving the person visualizations, spontaneous ones, stuff that pops up. Yeah. I've got a friend whose daughter, little girl, she's always encouraging her this, and she sees angels. Encourage her in what? To visualize. And this little child has all these visions constantly. Oh, I see an angel right there. I see this. Well, now she just proved exactly what I just said. As soon as, as, soon as you start sozoing, the demons will see you like it. Oh, is that what, you, that what makes you feel good? Okay. Now remember, the kundalini spirits, they're not like other demons. Fear demons torture you. Lust demons torture you. They do the opposite. They want you to feel good. Okay, lust demons and fear demons target rotten people with bad habits. These target anointed people that have good habits. They want good ministers, people who love God. They don't, they're not going after the heathens. These sozo people are good people. They're, they love God. These are not secret Satanists floating around. Bill it's not, no. No, th this is a system set up by a superior intelligence that I went over last night up the ladder of the demon chain running this whole program of Jesus' is fun. It's all a trick. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry to go back. What's the four doors again, please? Those are the four doors. They have four doors that they claim all spirits and all soul wounds and all wounds got in and all heartache and all, all kinds of pain comes in four different doors. So they teach you how to shut those doors. Say one of them's hatred, the other one's sex, the other one's the occult. Uh, what's the fourth one? Uh, the fourth one is um, unforgiveness. Unforgiveness, yes, is it? Thank you. Those are the four doors, and then they focus on those doors, which is good. Okay. 
They are not looking for bad things. They want good things. Good people, anointed people, smart people. Other demons, no. They, they like rotten people. They like people with low count, low integrity, character prop. They, they go for the craps. They don't. They go for the people serving God. The good people. So will those other Might. demons pull back then when the Kundalini comes in to get them built up? Of course. Yeah, they, 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 they run the show here. And many of these people here don't even, don't even really have heavy infestations of fear, lust, rage, anger, hate. They don't, they don't have it anyway because they're all born-again, spirit-filled Christians. See? So they've already gone through some mind renewal and renovation process, but they don't have any discernment, and so now they're passing out Christian tarot cards, thinking they're helping. They, they're not trying to hurt anybody. They're trying to help them. They believe they're helping them. They're blinded. They're blinded. They're blinded. And the target group is good people, good ministers, anointed ministers. Counterfeit. For the counterfeit. Also the counterfeit, isn't it? It's all counterfeit. It's all counterfeit here. See, it's a mixed bag. Four doors. Four doors is great. Wouldn't you want to close them doors? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So in, in the psychology world, we called it guided imagery. And now, now it's called sozo. There's Jesus. This is so sick. This is so sick. Back in 2006 or 7, I'm, I'm sitting there watching a YouTube video. And Patricia King is sleeping. And she's a, she wakes up hearing something on her roof. She looks up. And there is Michael the Archangel reached down and took her and put her in a chariot. And then he took off. He was pulling the chariot. And he went in space. And she was looking at the stars, staring at everything. And then he brought her back to her bed, bedroom. I know her. I know she's a beautiful woman. I know she's a good woman of God. I know she loves God. I know she's spirit-filled. Yeah. She had no clue Satan had taken her for that ride to go look at the stars. Deception. Yeah, they, for, for all of us, I mean, uh, are you saying all of these encounters that I know all these people that uh, are sharing, are they yeah. all, they're all Great. demonically rooted? The, uh, this is, yeah, it's a mixed bag is what I'm trying to get through. These people are not servants of Satan. They're good people serving God. Yeah. yeah. So, um, all right, so we know that rule of thumb is Satan gives you a problem, and then he gives you the solution. So why, what is this, the problem he's trying to solve? Is it rejection? No, he's trying to, he's trying to kill all these people. See, so these kundalini spirits yeah, get in their body, they think it's God, and then later on this person gets cancer, this one loses her mind. This one goes... I didn't even get to the symptoms yet. I was just showing what they're doing. 
they're destroying these people. And they spread them all through the congregation. Now this person's having weird dreams. Now that one's got nightmares. Now this one's, this one came down with cancer. This one's got arthritis. What's going on around here? Cancer is a special uh, gift from them. The prophetics, you wouldn't believe how many of them are dying of cancer. Die all the time, cancer. Okay, so you said she had no clue or no discernment. No discernment. Uh, no discernment. How do you get a clue? No discernment. Well, uh, without somebody like me around, you can't. <laughs> if you're completely sucked in and your subconscious mind has been taken, it's all normal to you now. You're fully convinced it's real, it's of God, and you're done. Didn't you say you had... Back 10 years ago, you had a bunch of these people coming in. You got about 50% of them that would, that would yeah. agree with you that, yeah, I'm infected. And the other one, they're like, no, you're crazy. Well, that's what happened to me in 05. See, I had a gal come to me from Patricia King's ministry, and I interviewed her. I thought, my gosh, this woman, it really isn't sick. She's fully anointed. She ministers all the time. She got a loving heart. She was an intelligent person. I didn't think there was anything wrong with her that much. She had a few things from her dad, a couple of wounds here and there. I thought, well, I'm just going to go in and pray for her. I took her in the prayer room over at the house of healing. Got the shock of my life. And it was so shocking, it kind of scared me. I actually stepped back when she started manifesting. The demon spooked me. Whoa! I backed up against the wall. I wasn't expecting it because she was such a nice person. I thought, man, I, th I was kind of secretly thinking, I, I think I'll steal her from Patricia King and get her over here. I guess that's why I got spooked. <laughs> and the other bad thing, the worst thing about her was she Caucasian. So this thing, so this thing, and he growled at me. And I went, whoa. You know, I didn't have Kelly back then to save me. This was, <laughs> this was before Kelly. PK. <laughs> and uh, then she went back to Patricia King's ministry, told them what happened. And I got flooded with them all summer long. I was doing three and four a day. Flooded because they wanted help? or flooded? They wanted help. They wanted help. So what did they do? Go back to her ministry after they got cleaned up? Yep, they went back over there. Did they continue to do Sozo? I thought they still do that. Stuff. Well, no, the, Sozo didn't exist back then. Oh. This is a Bill Johnson invention. Yeah, I thought it was they had something similar to it. Yeah. But um, this is the formal Sozo now. That's this right. is the updated version I gave here. Mm -hmm. But uh, Bill um, over the years, after the summer of 05, then, like I said, to, he just said, I, I would lose about 50% of them. Because I would explain to him, now look, these manifestations, this is not God. You're being tricked. These are familiar spirits. And they didn't believe you. They didn't believe me. Yeah. And so they would leave. And, and that's the way it is today. I lose about half of them. What do you say to these people? I mean, because I know a lot of people that are very, like, sucked into this. And they love their visions. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's the purpose of it. And they think that they're very anointed. That's correct. They see all these things. Right. That's exactly right. Did you hear what she just said? Everything she just said was a was mimicking. Imposters. Fake. See? How does it hurt them though? I mean, it hurts it, it hurts them by deception, lies, and the their main goal is to spread it. They want everybody here to get a kundalini spirit, see? So you can deceive everybody. And they play off, instead of your spirit man, they play on your soul. They make you feel good. They hit your body with positive sensations. Oh, yeah. I feel light. Oh, I'm tingling. I got tingling. Ooh. Uh, I, I, look. Oh, how can the anointing is all over me. You know, uh, one guy came in years ago. He had the hose. 
uh, uh, he didn't go to prostitutes. This is a familiar spare hoe. Whenever the anointing would come on him, click, 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 then, then his body would jerk forward. Ho! Hallelujah. Ho! And he'd start doing crunches like he was at the gym. Oh! And I said, dude, that's a, that's a demon doing that. Yeah. And you can track these things pretty easily because almost everything they have you doing, the net result of it is nothing. It's just a sensation, see? They'll have these elaborate visions. Woo! I'm in a chariot. I'm in, the, I'm in the Milky Way. You go back home and drop off in bed and nobody was helped. Nobody got any help. There's no value to it. See, it's more like spiritual entertainment. Yeah. yeah. I was on a Zoom, a friend invited me to observe this class. It was supernatural, whatever class. And they, they, she did a little teaching, and it was okay. And then uh, they had us pray for some people. And, um, I prayed for a young lady who's blind. And um, I said, okay, you know, tried to, you know, cast some spirits out, whatever. Anyway, then they moved to a, they got to a circle. And they were doing what they call throwing balls of the Holy Spirit around the room. Yeah. Beach balls. And uh, as they, you know, I got a ball, I'm going to throw it to you. And it would appear to and knock the person right out of their chair, laughing hysterically. So I said to the mom, because I talked with the mom and the daughter who was blind later, because she was confused, you know, the Holy Spirit, blah, blah, blah. I said, well, if truly the Holy Spirit was in the room, why wouldn't your daughter be healed? Mm -hmm. And she said, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. I said, so all these people were being touched by the Holy Spirit, but your daughter is still sick. And so she finally left. Mm -hmm. She left. And again, the point she's making there is the net result of all these activities. Look at this gold. Ooh, is nothing. There's no help. Right. See? In the New Testament, you got help. Spirit come out, healed, be healed, be delivered, be saved. See, those are wonderful benefits of the gospel. They give you sensations, emotional highs and physical hoes. <laughs> and the net result is nothing. Nobody got healed, nobody got delivered, nothing really changed, nobody repented, nobody's character improved, but it was fun, like a carnival. Like the state fair down here. It's fun. But after you leave the state fair, what happens? A, you got diarrhea. <laughs> you had the hot dogs. B, you're out about 150 bucks. And C, your fanny hurts because you went on the spider and you're too old. <laughs> you thought you were young again. Again, deception. Get on the spider. You're young and you can have fun and you get off the spider, vomiting, walking sideways like that. Stupid, stupid. And you notice that everybody on the spider is a Caucasian. Not a good sign. Stop it. It's all a state fair carnival ride. They're smarter than we are. God showed him, Todd, here's your apostle. This is what's going on. I love you. Reevaluate what you're doing. And nobody did. Mikey. That, 2005, was that around the time when Andrew Strong kind of broke this loose too? Because um, he was in the product, right? That's, that's, yeah. Then he's the one that did the Kundalini. Work. That was before that. Before yeah. that. So you knew it. Yeah, I knew him. I went on a mission so trip with him. Know about the Kundalini and all that stuff? No, he didn't know it back then. He didn't know it? Either. No. Okay. I didn't either. I didn't know what was going on. I was ignorant. I went to those things. Me too. My, wi my wife liked Patricia King, so I would go with her. And I went to see Todd Bentley a few times. I, was, I thought he was an interesting guy. I thought he had some decent stuff. Yeah, no, I was, I was fooled. I didn't know what was going on until that thing growled at me from that wonderful, loving woman. <laughs> I was up against the wall. 
but caught me completely off guard. I was shocked. I thought, what is wrong with this woman? I didn't see any of that. I did a detailed interview. I didn't catch a thing. Where'd that come from? Did you call out the demon? Hmm? Did, she, did you call out the demon? Did no. No, I was praying for her. And then, and then he pitched a fit. Oh. <laughs> Scared me, half spooked me. <laughs> no, I wasn't calling any demon. I was... I can't remember the benign, you know, kind of, yeah. kind of a Mickey Mouse thing. I didn't see anything wrong with her. I, I, I well, she's got some problems with her dad. Let's let's focus on that. Yeah. And then it wasn't her dad growling at me; it was somebody else. Right. And I was I was shocked. What would you do differently now? Oh, I'd go right after Growly. Oh no, that's a yeah. nothing deal. Back then, when I was ignorant, that's another story. That's a different deal. Yeah. I I know what was going on. But it was a red flag, and I had to investigate it because that anything that catches me off guard like that, I have to investigate. Why didn't I know that? How did that get past, past me? And then all summer long, all these great people were coming to see me, like from at the at the inner sanctum of the ministry, came to see me. Huge manifestations. I mean, I was like stunned. I'll just share this. So I've been meeting people recently on my Tuesday night that they're coming from churches that have this mixture. And the churches are sending them away because their manifestations are becoming so outrageous. Mm -hmm. And so the people get isolated because they don't want to go to church anymore because every time worship starts or the sermon begins, they start growling or flailing or burping or whatever, like it's all these manifestations start to happen and the pastors are, or the assistant pastors are sending them away saying you can't, and these demons will throw you to the ground. They're, they're causing distractions. Or, yeah, they're causing disruption, right? Mm -hmm. So then, yeah, I've been meeting them. That's the purpose of it. So a good distraction is be healed. Get up and give your testimony. Take a run. That is a distraction. Yeah. I take that one all day. This whore. Stop. I don't need a whore. Come on. Now, if they're a Caucasian, yeah, I'll let them in. But <laughs> healing and deliverance, the, the blessings of the gospel, repentance, salvation. Hey, crank it up. Let's say someone's. Um, and Luke, a uh, service with Luke Barnett, and there's a congregant, like Julie said, and they're growling, they've got a little demon manifestation, and the pastor says, I command you to get out in the name of Jesus. And if that pastor has the pistis faith, it should come out, right? Couldn't he do Probably. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I don't know anything about Luke. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm, Let's just say any pastor. Well, uh, well I don't know anything okay. about them either, so okay. I don't know. Okay. I, I don't know. Potentially that could happen, yeah, depending on the guy's anointing and what's going on with that person. Do they know him? I mean, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure, you know. But theoretically, it happened to Jesus. The guy started pitching a fit on Mark chapter 1, right there in the seat, ruining the sermon, and he blew the thing out of there. I, I have attended those those people that you're all talking about, but when you were talking about the whole, um, Patricia King had a certain little thing that she would say with a, a laugh, a short laugh, and I always sat in the back because I wasn't sure if I was in the right place. I was just testing the waters for a long time, and um, as I was going there to test the waters, uh, everybody started laughing, had that little laugh she had. It was all through the church, everybody picked, received it, and they all started. It was like everybody was her. They all had that same little laugh every so often. Yeah, and again, like I was telling her, the, the, their goal is to spread it. Mm -hmm. well, okay. They did. You know. The, the other question: the old yeah. people that came from her ministry, they got delivered and they went back. So does that mean they got seven times more demons? I don't know. I never followed up with them. They never came back. 
Maybe I was the first. I'm, I'm assuming they got reinfected. But again, the, the, these things are so dangerous because the people who have them are good people. They're not criminals, rapists, murderers, pedophiles, kooks. You're sitting there talking to them, wow, this is a, this is a beautiful person, you know. I'd like to have them in our ministry, you know, the kind of thing. That's how they, they sneak in. And they're that smart. That's how smart they are. They pick good people. Trick them, see. Years ago, uh, before that started, you could the demons were infiltrating the church. It was called the Holy Laughter Movement. And then everybody started going through hysterical holy roller laughing. They fall out of the chair. Ha, 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 everybody rolling around laughing their heads off. At the end of it, no good came out of it. Nobody got healed. Nobody got... To, again, it's all these manifestations and good feelings, but the net result is almost always nothing. And then the most frightening thing is the Holy Spirit himself breaks through sometimes in these meetings, and then you have like Todd Bentley or Patricia and whatever. People really get healed. So now the demons have got one up on us. They will market a healing, a real healing, to promote their hoes. They have a lot of healings. So did they drop you? I mean, after like... They dropped me. Yeah. As soon as I found out what was going on, then I had to fix... I had to sound the warning. And then that was it. Yeah, because they really support this. I remember asking Chris uh, Ballinger, you know, Bethel, what's with this roaring like a lion business and the laughing? I said, that's not the Holy Spirit. And he says, well, how do you know? <laughs> Well, that's the, that's the attitude Arnaud took in the beginning. See, he wasn't sure. So instead of raising a stink over it, he said, well, let's just, let's just love the people and let's go with it. And that's what they wanted him to do so they could spread. Yeah, contaminating the church, but they're targeting good people. Okay, this is not the satanic temple I was reading there earlier. No, the, no, these people are not in that group. Okay. They're, yeah. Okay. All right, so we've got good people. They're getting exposed to these things. Yeah. Because they lack discernment. Correct. So what should people be doing to develop discernment so that they don't get caught up with that grave-soaking stuff? Because I actually had somebody who I recently respect their opinion about spiritual stuff, say, well, the grave soaking thing, they explained it to me where something is in the Bible and somebody rolled up against Elijah's bones, and they got some people. They're, they're, they're all respectable. Not just your friend. These, these, are, these people are all respectable yeah. Christians. How do you develop discernment so you, you don't get caught up in that stuff? Okay, your, your development, your discernment has nothing to do with this or anything else. It's all done the same way, like they've been doing it for 2,000 years. You spend your time in prayer, you focus on God's Word, and you get filled with the Spirit, and then you, your anointing, your giftings go like that. It's got nothing to do with this or anybody else's program. That's how you do it. You get your anointing on your knees, and you get God's Word, and that's how that doesn't have to do anything with Kundalini's or Copeland or anybody else. That's how you do it. You get down here on your knees. And Father comes right to you. Praise God. You know. And then, of course, when this stuff hit, then everything else hit on top of it. Then the, the rise of Sid Roth. You know, the number one guy. Every Kundalini infected human being on, in the United States is eventually on that show. Selling tapes and books. Now it's now it's anything. It's just spread everywhere. And last night I'm at the altar, suffering through these demons, suffering. Some guy brought a girl here for prayer. The guy that brought her is massively infected with demons. 
I couldn't get one demon out of this guy. I've been working with him for seven years. He brings this girl. She can't get delivered because the demons tricked her. She had all these problems and a voice spoke to her in her head and told her that meditation would help these problems. Well, she listened to the voice and started meditating, and sure enough, these problems dissipated. She wasn't committing adultery anymore. She got off drugs, blah, blah, blah. I tried to explain to her that the demons create a problem, then they provide you with the solution to it. You had all these problems caused by demons, and then they gave you meditation to uh, fix it. And then they backed off and helped you fix it. So now she's in this loop of fail chronic failure and I could not get through to her. I tried every technique I could use and I got nowhere. She would interrupt my prayers to go back to telling me about med meditation. I couldn't, it failed. That's how smart these things are. They're, these demons are geniuses, professional. Well, I find it amazing that's not maddening to you because that would be maddening to me. It would, it would, it would just upset me. Are you going to get delivered of that today? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> These kind of people you just slap around. You don't worry about it. See, because he's not really Caucasian. <laughs> he's, he's secretly Hispanic. That's what it is. Italian. Uh, so when you're Italian, that's even better. All right. Italian. Oh, I may not be here next week. Okay, <laughs> who's, who's to, Kelly, you're next month. Kelly, right here. <laughs> Kelly will be here next month to yell at you. Okay, so we do not get into any guided imagery here. We can't do it. Okay, don't do that with anybody. Soul wounds, nothing. Because God requires us to walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. And so you cannot sit there do you see Jesus? There he is. What's he doing? Oh, he's sitting on a cloud, waving me over. What's he saying to you? Oh, uh, I love you. Go to college. We can't do any of that because the demons will see you like that and they'll mimic it. Just like they mimicked tarot cards. Now they got Holy Ghost cards. See that? They always mimic him. So if you're visualizing something, we're going to get in trouble because these people that come here, whew, they're demonized. They, they need real deliverance. And to give you an idea how bad this is, this is four doors, for example. The four doors are great. They don't cast the demons out after you shut the doors in, in the book. <sighs> Well, if you shut the doors, the demons that already got in are still there, right? So these demons can't get in because you shut your doors. But the ones that got in before, they're already there. That should have been in the book. Now you got to get the ones out that got in before you shut the doors. Duh. Nope. Didn't, didn't, didn't occur to them. Superior intelligence. I had it listed at up the chain, the super smart ones, the mind controllers. They're the scariest ones of all, mind control. Why? They're like cat burglars. They come in, they steal stuff, and they're gone. You don't know they were there. Mind control spirits are frightening because they put a thought in your head and you don't catch it. There's no alarm. Then you go with the thought. I don't think you're going to get any better. I'm not going to get any better. You know what you need to do? Try this method. Oh. And pretty soon you're running around trying everything in the world. They're telling you, why don't you try that? It didn't work. Try this one. They always provide a solution to your problem that they created. That's how smart they are. This is a superior level of intelligence we're looking at here. Yeah. Am I boring you, sir? 
Not at all. I <laughs> shouldn't have used you as that example. I apologize. No, no. I, Please forgive me. I was going to ask you a question. He's that, not a Caucasian. That's he's also, not. He's good. That's also work uh, and that's also the, uh, yeah. the psychology part. What's it called? Guided imagery. Guided okay. Imagery. You don't. We don't do that here. Right. Do not do any of that here. Don't do it in your ministry because you're running a very bad risk of a copycat. And they'll copycat you. You know, I told it last night. Devil said, here's all the kingdoms of the world. Phew! And Jesus standing right there looking at them all. It was real. What about with, with um, people going through deliverance? They're kind of, most every one of them stuck in a memory of childhood, of abuse or something that happened, a trauma. And they can't get out of that loop. You know, it continues to haunt them no matter how old they get. Yeah, of course. So that's an imagery issue, right? Because it's, who knows if it was real or not, because it, after 50 years, right? So what do you fight that with if not another image with Jesus to? No, no, see, she, she just fell into the trap. Did that's you hear that? That was perfect. Yeah. Perfect. We have to replace the imagery. Editing. You got to get rid of the memory. No, you don't get rid of the memory. You, you don't want your part of your mind being sucked out into some universal clunk, yeah. you have the memory and it no longer bothers you. It's like an ex-wife. <laughs> See? That's how, that you're healed over that. Yeah. Oh, you got abused? Yeah, I remember it, but whatever. Mm -hmm. I got healed of that. You had a bad leg? Oh, your knee got healed? Oh, yeah, my knee's healed. I remember having a bad leg. I was limping all over. But now I'm healed. I'm fine. See, God doesn't want you to lose your mind. He wants to heal the wound that was associated with that thing. Not by having him come to you in your head, talking to you. No, no, no. Jesus doesn't come visit you and talk to you. That's, that's not going to happen. So what do you do with the person that to let go, just like well, you can't control anybody. You can't control people's yeah. will. They have to have their own free will. So if they're not going to listen to me, uh, I, let them, I let them get up, run out of my office, and then I get a copy of their social media post. <laughs> 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 then I come in here and I read it to my friends. <laughs> that you can't control people. They're, everybody's free will determines what happens to them. And if, if you got mind control spirits and you're going to listen to them, I can't stop you from listening to them. I can't do it. And God won't do it. He'll only do it if you, your free will is decided to stop. Then he will help you stop it, but he won't force you to stop it. He's not going to force you to stop masturbating to porn. If you want to stop and be healed, he will help you do it. But God's not going to send an angel in there to knock your computer off the stand and grab your penis and hold it. Stop doing that. That's not going to happen. Your free will determines where you go in Christ and nothing else determines it. You can have everything you can believe for. That applies to me and everybody else. Anything you can believe for in the dispensation of grace is possible if you only believe. Praise God. But God's not going to stop you from sinning. He isn't going to do it. That's your choice. You decide if you're going to have stupid thoughts and keep them. You're going to do stupid things and do them. That's your issue. But if you decide you're not going to do that and you want God to help you, that we can break that. He can break anything. Praise God. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> anything is possible. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. But if I'm not going to cooperate, God's not going to 
force me to cooperate. You know, there's no, this isn't Hamas. This is all volunteer work. This is an Islam where you have to do something. If you don't do it, the morality police will come along and beat you into the ground with whips. That's what they do. They catch you wearing your hair, or hood, or something off. You get beaten with a whip in the public square. Now that's, that's not God. That's not the Holy Spirit. And he don't do that. If you want to wear, do, say, hey, it's up to you. But like I said last night, the law of sowing and reaping is a universal law. Sinners and saints, we all reap what we sow. There's no exceptions. Tell people um, that they need deliverance. There's someone from our church that um, whenever she talks, she always is so negative and so depressed. Uh -huh. And I know she means well. Um, she had a son that committed suicide a year ago. So she's um, struggling with a lot of things, but no matter what you say to her, she's like always struggling, and I can clearly see that she's, she's always what? Struggling. No matter what you say to him, she went. Always she's, struggling. Struggling. She's always depressed and always. Oh yeah. And yeah. I can clearly see that. Like I mean, I've never talked to her about deliverance because she's in the church, and a lot of people are very resistant to demons and all of that stuff. Um, but like I can see, she's so oppressed. Like she obviously has demons in her mind. Right. And um, I wanted to say something, but I just don't know if I would say, "Hey, you can be delivered." Like. And I don't know how you would approach that because I'm just not sure how open she is to all of that. Well, I approach it gently. You know, I don't, if the, if the person's totally ignorant, I don't just come out and say, you know something, you're loaded with spirits. <laughs> <laughs> okay, they're going to go, wait a minute. I feed the poor. I attend church four times. A week. How could I be? See, then that thing's going to go totally bad on you. But I focus on their wounds. Now, you, your son died. That's a great avenue to get in. Beautiful opening. Now, a lot of people have severe pain when they're, someone they love dies. <laughs> you can be healed. Mm -hmm. You know, there's some counselors over here. They don't charge. You know, mm -hmm. what's it going to cost you? I kind of soft soap it. Because I don't want to offend anybody. As soon as you offend them, they're, they're out the door. And then what happens to them? I'm, I'm reading their thing and... <laughs> you, gotta, you just got to laugh at it. If you don't, you're going crazy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know, Sarah, she made a really good point about the angel cards. Doreen Virtue, which was a great point. Right? Doreen Virtue herself had created angel cards. She has denounced them and said, please pull them off the market. Please burn them. Please get rid of them. She's a Christian now, she's born again. And yet, if you point that out to the person using the angel cards, you know, they get offended. That's the crazy thing about it, is like, no, we're, like we're trying to help you. Well, it's not crazy because they're getting offended. They don't like you stepping on their territory, so they get pissed off. Like that girl that was laying there praying that day in 2005, that thing, evidently, I said something or something that made him mad. And he come roaring at me. Rawr, rawr. See, that's what you're doing. You're stepping on their territory, and they don't like it. They'll fight back. That's that's perfectly normal. So I see that we went through like all of the lists, except for maybe I just missed it. But what is soaking prayer? I don't think. Well, that's where you learn to on your own visualize and. Uh, Imagine Christ and be peaceful. You know, in, the sec in secular psychology, they do something similar. Like, you know, they'll lead you through a comforting scene. You lay on the couch with the psychiatrist there, you know. And you're, you're in a flower bed. And you're, you're, you're young when you were at the park and you were at the zoo. I don't know when you were petting the animals. Can you remember that? They're trying to get anxiety disorders fixed. It's usually for anxiety. That's what it is. So they try to get reprogram their mind to think positive things instead of negative. It's, it's a behavior modification of the mind. Well, we don't do that here. This is all spiritual. This is all spiritual. So we don't have visions of heaven. There's no, there's no courts of heaven. That's all a crock. 
the courts of heaven are here at the altar on your knees, repenting. The courts of heaven come to you. Unless you become as a little child, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Well, if you become a little child, the heaven comes to you. You don't need to go to the courts of heaven and get a bunch of kundalini crap. Yeah, again, I know a lot of really wonderful people, and they mean well, but I can clearly see that demons are yanking their chain and using them, speaking through them. And how do you help these people just get a little discernment? Uh, well, the way I do it is form, I know the way I the way I do it is I look for something they need. So, if they're a superstar Christian, they, every Christian has something they need. They need help with something, and so I try to find out what that is and use that as an entry point. It's easy to convince them, really, because you're saying, hey, you're a superstar Christian, you're doing all these things right, but you still got that black spot in there. Now, why is that still there? If you're, if something's missing here, you know, and you present it gently without pissing them off, and they'll, this, you know, half the time they'll respond, maybe you'll get half of them. But half's better than none. Oh. Now, if you have anybody that fits into this category, I have a little handout for you today. <laughs> These demons are really hard to get out. It's very hard. And here they are. 514 method does it. Here's the miracle list. If this person does not develop the gift of hate, so if you've got gold dust, gems, feathers, hose, whatever it is, whatever you got, and you don't have any godly sorrow for yielding yourself over to these spirits, and you don't have any hatred for what they did to you and your family, your friends, if you don't hate them, we're not going to be able to get them out. And so I always have them emphasize a 514 on the miracle list here. They have to develop this to get these familiar spirits out because they're so smart, and so powerful that uh, if you don't hate them, if you have any kind of comfort with them at all, they won't come out. And they'll know if you hate them or not, just like everybody else does. If you hate somebody, it comes right out of you. They know you hate them. Some of your relatives just popped in your mind, but... <laughs> wow, when you when people hate each other, the other person knows it. Hate's not something you can hide. And if you don't have any hate for sin, for demons, for being deceived, for being made a fool out of, if you don't have any hatred for that, or them taking your family members, destroying them, you don't hate that? You're okay with it? No deliverance. Drugs, alcohol, smoking. It's almost impossible to get them healed. Why? There's comfort there. There's smoking. Man, that's a tough one, smoking. Wow. That's really a tough one, smoking. Because, hey, it's a habit. It feels good. There's something there. If you have any something there for it, the thing won't stop. They'll just keep coming back. Because they know you got a little affection for it. That's why we teach so much about self-pity. Because self-pity is a killer. It'll wipe your anointing out. It'll crush your life. Because it's you saying, oh my gosh, I wish somebody would have sympathy on me. I'm really sick. I need to be given special favors. I need somebody to care about me. And then all the emphasis is then on self-pity instead of being on here, the person that truly cares for you and wants to help you. Self-pity is a major suicide bomb. It's kind of like being a narcissist, the other direction. You said it was like heroin in a previous teaching, and it stuck with 
Well, heroin's a great drug. I mean, uh, you take heroin and it's a, it's a great friend. It makes you feel better. Uh, you, you're so, fentanyl is even better. What a wonderful friend fentanyl is. People take that and they think they don't have any troubles for 50 minutes, hour and a half. They don't have any sorrows. Just the desire to shoot themselves dissipates. You know, the devil knows what he's doing. Booze is fantastic. Uh, alcohol is a great friend. He's, he's reliable. He always comes through. But then, and then he doesn't. The devil always gives you something good. Oh! Heroin. Two H's, but they both wear off. And then it's horrible. Right? So with Say what? The, like when I when I have that because I have familiar spirits, um, and like in the beginning because my mother-in-law had them like, oh, transfer yeah. in the church and stuff. Yeah. And I remember, of course, after being delivered, it was I had a lot of what was it? Sadiac. Sciatic. Sciatica. Sadiac. Yeah. Sorry, is that wrong? You're out. <laughs> She's not Caucasian. <laughs> <laughs> I say it different. <laughs> so I had that. I had a lot of pain in my back. I got sick. When and then when I came to the Lord, I was not sick. I didn't have nothing. And then I started God. getting all these sicknesses. Just weird. You know, my first pregnancy, I got married to my husband, and it was like, whoa, I got sick. And I would always ask, how, how am I sick, Lord? Why? I came healthy. I've never had this. Of course, I had a lot of forgiveness. I was criticizing them. How did they do that? They're Christian. And how could they talk like that? And we'll go, right? I got super loaded. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I started doing it. I would criticize yeah. them. And then I started doing that. Mm -hmm. I started, like, I would fall on the floor, remember? And they would never tell me nothing. And I would think, okay, because this is God. And I would just stay there. I couldn't even get up. Like, it was so uncontrollable. But I would just be crying, 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 crying. And they would never say nothing to me. So I guess that's when it all started. And mm -hmm. Never had answers for me. Mm -hmm. Nobody, everybody's sick still in that church. Like nobody has gotten healed, anything. But I remember the last time when I came here, I was pregnant, pregnant, and the baby had died already in six weeks of my pregnancy. Mm -hmm. I was carrying it till six months. Mm -hmm. And when I came back here, because I was pregnant the first time with my daughter, mm -hmm. and then I, when I came back. In that moment, the Lord revealed to me, my uncle had died from cancer, my cousin, it got passed on to my uncle, oh. he died from cancer the next year, and then he was aiming at me, oh. and I had six months with everything, the bag, the placenta, and it was causing me to get worse, like I couldn't even get up from bed, it was bad, and nobody was able to help me, nobody was, oh, it's okay, blah, blah, blah whatever. Here I told, Lord, if this is not of you, if this is, because we were talking about Kundalini, it is Kundalini, and this is a transfer from, you know, everybody I've been around. I don't want it. In that moment, I started gushing out blood. Everything started coming out for weeks. I had weeks of placenta, weeks of stuff. Wow. And the Lord wrote to me, I was going to get cancer. If I wouldn't have, have gave it up because I still oh. didn't want to give it up. I was like, no, it is you. It feels good. And you reveal stuff to me. Ooh, all these emotions and feelings. And yeah. For years, crying, mm -hmm. crying, crying, crying. Thinking it was him, and it wasn't. Right. Wow. That's a whole teaching. Yeah. Ah, that's a great Bible study. Uh, what she said, though, happens all the time. Here's what happens. The demons get into the person when they're little, and then when they're older, they get saved. Well, the demons go dormant. They'll hide in there like an insurance policy. If the person gets saved, then they start manifesting and tearing them apart. And their Christian life is miserable. And they don't know why, because the ministers told them, if you come to Christ, it's happiness and joy and peace. It turns out to be a living hell. Why? The dormant demons manifested. That's what happened to her. They were hiding in there. 
Uh, yeah. Um, you said earlier that nobody thanked you. Nobody what? You said earlier that you don't get thanks. No, I don't expect any. Thank you. Well, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> 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 um, well, can we edit that out? Because I just... <laughs> I just contradicted all my teaching. Um, <laughs> now, every once in a while, somebody will say thanks. But again, if you're not expecting it and you don't get it, you're not hurt. Okay. Right. And so you're grateful for that when you hear it. But if you're expecting it all the time, then it's not a big deal. And if that is important to me. I like that because you don't get it very often. See? But I also got a little bit of a miracle. I know you prayed for me last night. And I left. The reason why I left, and I've been through two deliverances here, rough ones, very, very rough ones. Oh, good. Um, I wear contact lenses. One popped out last night when you were praying for me. Oh. And I, I found it, thank God, it was right on the end of my finger. I couldn't. Oh. Yeah, you know, and, and I found it uh -huh. and was able to put it back in. But when I came back, um, you were busy. But which is fine, which, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Um, but I just realized how hard that some of these things fight, that they'll do anything to distract you and right. get your mind off of off mm -hmm. where you are. Mm -hmm. But on the way home, I'm surprised half of Phoenix didn't hear me screaming at these things. Oh. You know, how dare you do that? How dare you? You you do that to me and um, immediately they're after my family right now so um, in fact that's probably where I'm going to go is up to my daughters because my granddaughter is, is becoming very violent um, and that was another thing how do I deal with that going through deliverance myself and not fully there but not wanting to step into a situation where <coughs> I'm going to get attacked again. Um, how do I handle that? But I can't. It's my granddaughter. Well, what it is is uh, this guy's a peach. Uh, he's he's doing number fourteen. See that he's. He was yelling at him on the way home. He was getting. He was getting the anger and hatred for them. Now he's angry and hatred. They've come after the granddaughter. Yeah. They want her They want her now. Yeah. And that's getting under his skin. Yeah. See, so th this guy is the poster child for what I hoped would happen in the ministry. Praise God. That I would run into a thousand of these guys that got the revelation and went with it yeah. and became warriors and fighters. Yeah. That, that was my dream. Praise God. Yeah. And so, God. how do you handle that situation? The first step is, we're going to prayer in five minutes, and you go ahead and come down here and finish that off. That's the first thing you do. And then you go get the devil who's trying to get your granddaughter. That's how we do it. And when you came in last night, I was busy, but... The Holy Ghost is never busy. Amen. Amen. Never. So, whether I'm there or not is immaterial. Praise God. If he's there, that's the end of it. Conversation stops at that point. That's the mic, mic drop. When he's there, nobody needs mic. So you and him got two great sermons there. <laughs> People would love to hear that yeah. information that you two just shared. Wouldn't they? I thought they were good, good Bible studies. Yeah. That, that actually happened to me in a few weeks. Uh, that, that's how the demons were attacking me. I was uh, coming up for prayer, and I'm like, man, everybody's getting prayer, but no one's approaching me. And uh, I was like, 
what the heck? <laughs> I sort of took offense to it slightly. <laughs> well, the Holy Ghost was standing right in your face. There you go. <laughs> but the problem was, I doesn't like people wear Iowa shirts. <laughs> and that ruined the whole night. Okay, but no, I, I am not necessary for anything. <clears throat> people are just <clears throat> vessels. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. He's got it covered big. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Okay. We'll uh, close in prayer there. And then I'll... <clears throat> It's, he didn't show up. Oh, All right. Lord Jesus, what a great uh, day for me. Thank you. It was beautiful. And uh, great questions. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I wasn't trying to offend anybody or criticize anybody. I was simply trying to expose these spirits. So... You know, I know some people are going to be offended when they see this tape, but I wasn't trying to hurt anybody. I was just trying to show people what they do, what you taught me, how they behave, how they react to people, what they do to people. That's all I was doing. So if I offended somebody, I apologize. But right now, the Holy Ghost is here, yes. the one and only. And yes, I expect every person here that needs to be delivered, that it will happen in the next few minutes in Jesus holy name. Praise God. Amen. Praise Amen. Praise God. Uh, the training is over. You're dismissed. Come down here if you need prayer. My ministry team is going to come down here and help me. And we are going to drive these things out. Huge. Huge. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, dear Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, dear Lord. Satan's not going to have that granddaughter. That's not going to happen. Yes, sir. That is simply not happening. Period. You mind control spirits. You put these thoughts in people's mind. You lie to them all the time. That's going to stop today. You're going to stop doing that. You're going to stop it. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to make you stop. We're going to make you stop. We're going to make you stop. Thank you, Jesus. All right, now, each one of you are born-again Christians. I know that. Each one of you have the anointing. I know that. And you're ready to go because you came down here. Praise God. Yes. Sir. We got every ingredient. Come down here, hon. Yeah. And a girl. Praise God. Thank you. Yeah. Well, we got everything covered here. Yes, Lord. Thank All of it. Holy Spirit. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Close your eyes now so we can anoint you in Jesus' holy name. Father, here they are. Here's your servants. And you've got great ministries for them. Lots of people are going to get saved healed and delivered yes, Lord. using these saints of God standing right here in the sanctuary. It's, it's my privilege to be standing here looking at them. It's a privilege. It's a privilege to be here. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Spirit, in the name of Jesus, you are bound by the blood of Christ and the Holy Spirit. You're bound by God's holy word and you will come out when they tell you to right now you're going to come out in jesus holy name yes Lord. you're going to come out of there right now in the name of the lord you're going to get out of that body and you're going to come out of there <clears throat> right now you're going to come out of that body come out of that body there it goes come out right now you're going to come out of that body right now 
get out of that body right now. Come out of there right now. Get out of there. Every demon from Germany. Get out of that body right now. Come out of there right now. Get out of that body right now. Mind control monster. Mind control. Get out of that body right now. You mind controller. Get out of that Jesus holy name. And go. Come out of there. Come out of there. Granddaughter killer. You murderer. You murderer. Get out of that body right now. Come out of there. Get out of that body right now. Come out of that body right now. Come out of that body right now. Get out of that head right now, you mind control monster. Get out of there. Hurry up. Come out of that body right now. Get out of there. You come out. Get out of my head. Come out of my head right now. I command you to come out. You get out of that body right now. Hurry up. Go. Come out there right now. Hurry. Come out right now, quickly. Come out of my tummy. Come out of my genitals right this second. Come out of there right now. Come out of my shoulders. Come out of my shoulders. Come out of my soul. Come out of there. Come out. Get out of the body right now. Come on. There he is. Come on. He's coming out now. Hold that. Hold that. Come out right now. Hold that. Come out. Come out right now. Quickly. Come out. Come out of the body right now. Come out of here. Feel. Feel. Come, come out of that body right now. Quickly. Satan, lose your hold of me. Satan, come out. Satan, lose your hold. Get out of body right now. Hurry up. Right out of there. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. Satan, lose your hold of her. Satan, lose your hold of her. Come out of that body right now. Come out of that body right now. Satan, lose your hold of her. Go. 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 You get out of there. Come out. Get. get out of that body right now. No, move now. Move now, quickly. Quicker. Quicker. Get out of that body right now. Hurry up. Come out of there right now. Get out of that body right now. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Come out. You spirit of fear, come out of there. Demon of fear, come out. Fear of men. Fear of men. Fear of men. Come out. Yeah. Come out. Get out of her back right now. Come out of Come out quick. Come out of back. Come out. Get out of back right now. Come out. Come out of that body right now. Satan lose your hold on him. Come out. Come out quickly. Come out quickly. Every demon from your husband. Come out. Come out. Demon of fear. 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 You let go of my baby. You let go of my girl. You let go of my girl right now. Until you just hold it in. I command you by the word of God to let go of my granddaughter. I command you to lose her. Demon of violence. Come out of our family. Come out. Come out right now. I said go. <laughs> you come out of that body. Go, go. Get out of that spine. Come out of that spine. Entity, come out of there. Come out, you entity. Come out right now. Hurry up. Come out of there. Get out of that body right now. Hurry up. Come out of her. Satan. Satan, move. Go now. Go now, right now. Come out. Come out of there. Come out. Get out of that body. You get out of that body right now. You come out of there. You get out of there now. You stinking Nazi. Come out of there. You filthy demon from Germany. Come out of that body right now. Come out of there, you killer. 
I'm Norwegian. Go. I'm Norwegian. Norwegian. I'm not drunk. I'm Norwegian. I didn't know that. I'm Norwegian. I know. I know. What's the main spirit? I'm Norwegian. 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 Huh? Oh, that's secularism. That's what? ungodly. Secularism. Secularism? Yeah. Oh. The most secularized country in the whole world. Oh. Yes. Norway. Oh my God. It's the worldly spirits. Go. You come out of there, every one of you. Come out of there right now. Worldly spirits. Secularism. I, I bind your power. Come out of this woman of God. And stop blocking your healing ministry. Stop blocking your healing ministry. Come out of there. And let's go. Come out. Come out. You get out of that body right now. Get out of that body right now. Satan, come out of that body now. Quickly. I command that entity to come out of that spine. Stop hiding in the spine to come out. Come out of that body quickly. Hurry up. Come out of there right now. Go. Go. Come out right now. Come out right now, you filthy devil. Come out right now. Come out right now. And go. Go. And go. Come out, you filthy spirit. You pervert. Get out of me. You pervert. Come out here, you pervert. Out. Go now. Go now. There he is. Keep coughing. Come out, devil. Keep going. There they go. There they go. Come out, devil. Come out, devil. You get out of Come out, spine. Go. Come out, spine. Come out, spine. Get out of there. Come out. Get out, buddy. Hurry up. Go. Come out of there. Hurry up. Hurry up. Come out there right now. Go. Come out quicker. Quicker. Quickly. Come out quickly. Quicker. 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 Come out quicker. Come out quicker. Quickly. Go. Quickly. Come out quicker. Quicker. Go. 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 Got fear demons. Get out of there. Good. 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 Good, good, good. 